I V M. If you're listening to podcasts, chances are you are part of a community of people who are already seeking out amazing content, and a high probability of that is music. Well, let me tell you about Made in India, a podcast that, as the name perfectly suggests, gives you a chance to enter the lives of some amazing independent musicians from India who have been making some excellent tunes and filling playlists for a while now. Catch Made in India every Monday on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, anywhere you listen to podcasts, or even the IVM podcast app. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Geek Food Podcast. Uh, today we have Naveen, our producer, who's uh, sitting in uh, for this episode. Hi man, what's up? How's hey going? man, what's up? It's ninety-seven episodes. What really? Yeah, this is ninety-seventh one. This is the closest I could ever get to that number in my life because in school I was a very high achiever. I'm glad so. someone's keeping account. Though. Yeah, that's someone being me. <laughs> like, yeah, well, it's kind of your job, though. Yeah, it is, it is. yeah. Do you feel like your parents will look and go like, "Oh, ninety-seven, not bad." But look, now they got ninety-nine episodes. Look at uh, <laughs> look at Cyrus. Yeah. See, look at Cyrus. Cyrus Kabita, 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 Kabita. <laughs> 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 Wow, that's we'll catch up. Yeah. Tap there as well. Next, next half yearlies, we will beat Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Also, Dinkar is here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hello. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah. And I'm Tejas, and we're today uh, talking about. Uh, we're doing a listicle-ish kind of episode Where we're going to be talking about our favorite movie universes Now, the rules for this uh, episode is that um, uh, We are not going to stray into the more mainstream ones Like Marvel, DC, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Star Trek, Star Wars hmm. now, I know that takes a lot off the table But uh, sometimes there are a few movies which don't even have that many You know, they don't have that, ha- that many parts in their franchise Maybe it's just a singular film mm-hmm. And they have gone on to make such memorable you know rules of engagement in their universe mm-hmm. that makes it like a really cool awesome place for, for, us, for us to inhabit even if it is for that one and a half hours two hours that we are in the theater or it could be a television uh, program it could be a game a comic book I'll leave it up to you guys so we're gonna be that's interesting I didn't know these were the rules so a singular film <coughs> that yeah. created a... a lasting impression or a cool universe right. which, okay, okay. and I can give you some examples huh, uh, example. which are in my selection for today so I'll just I'll get into that All right. but just uh, an Another set of rules hmm. When you are talking about your uh, universe of choice Let's try and do it so that you set up uh, for us wh- So why you may love it uh, mm-hmm. It can be because of maybe the setting it's in Like the the actual, you know, the, the place or the, you know, the physical location of it Or it could be what are the, what are the rules, what are the physics of this universe mm-hmm. You know, maybe we can uh, get into that And then obviously the characters and the story are definitely a big part of it as well All So. Right. Who wants to go first? Uh, we can go... I'll go first. Anti-clockwise. <laughs> okay, Naveen. All right. Cool. Uh, go ahead. Both the uh, suggestions I have are uh, TV show based. All right, sure. One Ooh, is the nice. Black Mirror Universe. Oh, nice. Okay, uh, cool. And I, I don't know if you noticed that there's a continuity in the season. So that's what I was just going to ask. Yeah, is the, yeah. Do you think, is there a theory for the entire Black Mirror Universe to be... It is all happening theory? in the same universe. In the same plane. I think right? it's in the same plane of existence, but the time... Different timelines. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Hmm. Like you can see, understand that San Junipero happened somewhere later in the in the storyline. Yeah. Or or, uh, for example, if you see the first one in the third season, right? The yeah. one where they're reading each other. The that first is, episode, like, just, like, yeah. That seems like 2018 now for me. That's so like right yeah. now. In fact, I just... Uh, what There was an article... In China. Uh, yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. Uh, China trying to make their government that way. Where they, Wait, what? It's a like-dislike kind of uh, reading like system. Government? Everything, no, yeah. no. So the, they're, they're trying to establish it. Um, yeah, these communists. <laughs> <laughs> they're basically trying to establish uh, a society where you'll have a personal rating. Like, I mean, we've gone so far as to now have biometric metric you know cards and everyone mm. has an Aadhaar card in Dubai yeah. they have an Emirates ID which becomes your access point for everything that is so actually scary it is scary it's mm. very Aurelian but now what if you just add an actual you know a points based rating system for each person who goes by I mean you can, mm. it would become like a, it'll, your, your driving your traffic rules uh, like you know obeying that would come into play I guess on that and everything would kind of yeah. just you know all Man, I've seen my Uber rating yeah. go down in the past one month what have and you only, been doing only because I told him to come to pick me up where I want him to pick me up right? <laughs> so basically you come asked on, what please. the service offers <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's exactly so I noticed a trend of change in my rating yeah. so it went from 4.65 to like 4.56 now 
I think they are trying to build something and I think there'll be a payoff somewhere. But what in the about future. an episode yeah, that's like an uh, overt connection? Yeah, they, I mean uh, like is there more similar like that? technology being visible yeah. in different places. And the more you watch these episodes you can believe that these are pockets of world that they're covering. Right. Like the the soldiers going out in a particular part of the world is their old story. Yeah, yeah. We don't see them anywhere apart from that. So we don't know where they and come again, from. And again like similar technology again like you know where they see them as roaches, yeah, you know yeah, like that yeah, that yeah. episode, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think uh, that universe really So that's different. like the bleakest universe I can think is, of yeah. and it is the universe we live in now well yeah I think we're edging towards it's uh, you know a little more. if we may I just mean, touch upon AI for a second yeah um I don't know if you saw that the whole thing about Sophia the AI getting her citizenship in Saudi Arabia. Did <laughs> yeah. you see that? No. Who's the first that? okay so you remember Ex Machina, right? Like yeah. uh, you know Alicia Vikander's character. Mm. So that kind of robot exists, right? And I mean obviously it's not as functional and it doesn't like you know respond all the time to every question. I mean I my which makes it more human. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I like, hey, how are you doing? Mm. Yeah, so I just bought the Amazon Echo and I swear sometimes I just ask her a question and she's just like, yeah, I don't really know what to say to that. <laughs> you know, it, it just reminds me of my my 19 year old nephew. But anyway, uh, but uh, you know, uh, so they they just had this uh, this character Sophia who's been on Fallon and everything, and it's it's quite creepy because they've actually put like you know muscle movements in the face where she can smile, frown, and it's really creepy. But she's from Saudi Arabia. I will not. So she was invited to Saudi Arabia, okay, okay. and she's like a first person ever to get citizenship <laughs> in Saudi Arabia, which I find just the irony of that is oh just hilarious. So they're giving it to a woman where they treat their women yeah. so. We won't be able to see the muscle Insane. movement if you put a burqa on. But exactly. Man. Everyone's jokes were just like, you know, we're going to have to put a burqa on. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, Sophia, get ready to not be able <laughs> to drive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, so that's a pretty but bleak. She said her husband with like three other robots. <laughs> what is, yeah. How's that going to happen? That's <laughs> <laughs> But that's that's pretty insane. So why do you why do you like that universe, Naveen? What's because it's the most realistic thing, as we already discussed. Like we we are moving, we're hurtling towards a time and space where now we have no privacy, right? If you yeah. see this meme that recently was shared about Durgesh, like you know, yeah, uh, that was the, the, the Durgesh meme yeah. uh, about this guy who basically uh, I don't know if you've seen it, Dinkar. No. Not even saying anything. Yeah, no, yeah. So it's just like, I, I don't know. want to say it. Did I? <laughs> I don't know who Durgesh okay, is. So, so me- basically, yeah. Uh, so ahead. this meme was basically this guy uh, takes a selfie and says, uh, "I'm going to meet the love of my life." Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he got he catfished up, by an uh, older guy. Uh, uh, so the older guy is his father. It was oh, actually so fa- they found out that this is his father and he's disabled, so and, which makes to, it even more tragic. You know, the story yeah, like his father is disabled, and he's just this guy who took photographs of him and his dad for revenge. For revenge, and that became a meme, and everybody in in. Up all over the world basically yeah. like now they have this whole Bob's and Vagine thing going on yeah, like yeah, Indians yeah. are a stereotype now for different reason altogether on yeah. meme pages oh, so right. they share it like wildfire and when the real story came out uh, you know yeah. the original post is still there they haven't even removed it like that's how bad yeah. a time we live in nothing is safe nothing is sacred yeah so, oh, so Lord, your, your, yeah, yeah, your photos go out your uh, your personality and everything is attacked you don't know what to say because you and can't even rebut as such because thousands of people have seen it it's gone live viral yeah. uh, and once that effect has happened there's nothing you can do to fix it yeah there's yeah. no there's no damage control do you guys remember that, that lady uh, who caused the twitter storm because she got fired while she was on a flight yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, we what? spoke oh, about this on IVM so, well. oh yeah so yeah. she basically she was getting onto a flight to Africa mm-hmm. I think yeah. and uh, she tweeted something ridiculous like uh, gonna go to Africa hope I don't get AIDS or oh, I'm just a white woman it won't happen to me Whoa. or something like that like racist but you could she, see she was being like ironic yeah. or whatever yeah. okay. so she tweets this gets onto the flight and, and while she was off. on the flight yeah. while her phone is off this yeah. tweet blew up and people were like who is this how can she talk like oh this my gosh. So she gets off and just like is hit with a flood of messages oh she was fired from her job and she's still like struggling and in news, life this media at the airport 
Yeah, waiting to take her picture. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. that's insane! What, 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 shit, that's I mean, a black mirror episode. Is, on like, I mean, just, you know, and this that is, is this a black mirror episode. To, to friends of ours, man, like Supratik. Uh, I mean, like yeah, recently yeah, was yeah, caught yeah. in a in a Twitter for no reason. Feud. I mean, like the the freedom of speech, you know, that everybody's fighting for, and everyone, you know, and yeah, you gotta be a little sensitive. But the thing is that Twitter has become this ugly kind of monster. Yeah, yeah, monster, which can just lead to like yeah. literally anything. Yeah, I so mean, I'm not even pumping yeah. AI into Twitter. I don't know what will come out of it, man. Like yeah. they'll, they'll selectively Like that, Captain America they'll selectively Minority report out. shit man Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. exactly Yeah Oh well That's a bleak universe too I'm Sorry to have like started Twitter is a bro. disaster anyway yeah, I, I feel like it was definitely. always Like a black hearted Piece of crap you And know, now it's know, just coming I, out I just feel like You know 2010, 2011 When Arabic was becoming The, the most popular language on, on Twitter Because the whole mm. Arab spring And it was doing So Correct, much yeah. good and stuff Which has gone Like such a far cry From there now <laughs> yeah. man. I like, feel like Twitter Is very useful When it comes to like News and stuff like that and But puns. the I thing is the I hate people mm. And Twitter is full <laughs> of people Who have the need to say like Well this is what I think I'm like I don't care what you think And now why we have, you on we have it? trolls in what? this country oh, Why are you on it then? Uh, yeah. So that people can talk to me At Dings Things About episodes <laughs> of King Food HQ I'm not even joking Like I just looked at my tweets And literally the past 20 of them Which means 20 weeks yeah. Have been responding to People who've said something About Geek Food HQ Fair enough Nice I mean like we're all Let's on play an edition of Dinkar's game <laughs> <laughs> put the put Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook <laughs> into Hogwarts answers. houses. <laughs> okay, Twitter is Slytherin. Uh, Twitter no is question Slytherin. about it. Yeah. Well, Twitter dicks. could be could, Twitter could be Ravenclaw because it's the sharpest. Like, I mean, like you'll find the most like Slytherins are sharp. Fair enough. Well, Voldemort is intelligent. Yeah, I guess, yeah. but he's a dick. Okay, so Facebook is uh, Gryffindor. Gryffindor. <laughs> really? Yeah. Instagram is Hufflepuff. I feel it's like the nicest, and uh, Snapchat is. I'd say Snapchat is like the well then that should be half a I feel like Facebook <laughs> is the Ravenclaw. I think Snap Deal is Slytherin. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's another thing. I think Snap, <laughs> Snap Deal is Filch. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they just they clean up on their goodness. Hey, I actually bought my sound card on Snap Deal and they did a good job. So I I, I bought a GitHub pedal <laughs> from Snap Deal. <laughs> yeah, it's a last it resort. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the websites. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, all right. Sorry, sorry. We're gonna yeah. come back. Okay, cool. So I mean, obviously, the Black Mirror is super relevant in our in our day and age which is why I think we can just go on talking about it but let's move on hmm. uh, Dinkar what is your selection for a universe that you'd like to live in I didn't mention that oh. you would like to live in but it's fine I mean I'm sure you, we, you yeah. already live no, in it yeah. yeah you already it's live totally in it fine. I didn't know we had to live in it okay uh, uh, <laughs> I just like it from afar <laughs> yeah. I get on stage every night okay, okay I have yeah, a few exactly. ideas okay go ahead <clears throat> but uh, okay let me throw this one out there because I think it's a uh, it's a gimme all right. The Mission Impossible universe. Ooh, interesting. I mm. love it. The one with the IMF. Yeah. Yes. We only like we were just discussing this on last week's episode. Well, which I was is lens, why, by like, the way. The, the like, I was not on the recording, <laughs> yeah. but when I spoke about uh, uh, like the the body double to Tom Cruise being a camera, <laughs> 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 I lost my shit. It's funny. Yeah. But he yeah. is. That is a large part of why I love the Mission Impossible <laughs> franchise. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Cruise, dude. Yeah. He's a force of nature. He really is. He's but, insanely so, cool. So I, I mean, the Mission Impossible. Franchise, if you just want to sum it up, is basically crazy stunts happening around the world. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty that's, much. That's what it is, and it's got. It's led by. Uh, I mean, and it's got. Even the, like the yeah. cast is expanded in a great way over time. Yeah. Simon so, Pegg, Jeremy Renner. Yeah. Jeremy Renner, yeah. yeah. So you know the thing is that every time Jeremy Renner has been included in one of these things, it was like that joke in Entourage where they said like everything that every franchise that didn't have a person who wanted to continue it says <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal is going to take yeah. over, right? Yeah. So I always thought Jeremy Renner was kind of you know to to be like the next guy, the guy to kind of take over from from him, but that never really happened. It's just Tom Cruise has decided to stay on, right? Because so, he can. Yeah, he can. The man is ageless. Man, first it's of so all. weird. I was just watching a good year. Okay, a movie with Russell Crowe. It's like a it's a very bad romantic comedy with uh, Russell Crowe and directed by Ridley Scott. Man, Russell Crowe is supposed to be playing like a 35-year-old or something like that, but he looks like 50. Yeah. He is in The Mummy with Tom Cruise mm. and he's younger than Tom he's Cruise. He's younger than Tom Cruise. He's younger than Tom Cruise by like a couple and of years yet, at least. When when they stand next to each other, it's it's like Tom Mr. Cruise. Mr. Yeah. Crowe. Yeah. I think, I think Russell Crowe has aged well. 
I, I don't. He's aged well. The he's, transition is nice. Okay, so let's put it this way: Russell Crowe has aged well. Tom Cruise has not aged at all. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that's what I find obnoxious even about the Bollywood actors, right? Like, if you're your age, like fifty, then act your age. Like, move on from that. It's easier for women to get cast as mothers and aunties. Yeah, and stuff that's in true. Uh, there was a video that came out on Facebook. I don't know if you yeah, saw that. Yeah, the yeah. age gaps between yeah. characters and like yeah. their their like, mothers. Shifali the... Shah is younger than Akshay Kumar and plays his and mother plays his mom. in Vakt. <laughs> Something like that. Right? So I think Vakt the race against time, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Please say the full title. Sorry, worked the race against time. <laughs> Directed by Vipul Shah. Correct. So, <laughs> so in that, so even if Vipul you Vipul D Shah, Vipul please. D Shah. I'm so sorry. I'm not done my basics. Wow. <laughs> the, the numerology gods are already like, what's happening? <laughs> Up in arms. Yeah. No, but definitely, man. I always find that. But you don't think Tom Cruise is doing something similar where he's got very young actresses being cast opposite yeah. him? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the same. same, same he mission. is, but uh, but no, there's mm, no but. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's okay. I if know, he, if no he looks like an older that, dude really. who's doing bad. Stuff, I would be even more interested in watching that. However, just to put a point across, I mean, yes, he does have these very young actresses playing across him, but rarely are those films about that. I mean, like Michelle That's Monaghan true. is his wife, and they kind of put her on a on the backbencher for uh, the previous two movies. I want to say is mm-hmm. because she was, you know, they they wrote in a little bit where they said, oh, she's being protected, she's under protective custody, and she thinks that he's dead, da da da, all that stuff. But now the news is that for the next uh, MI6, if I'm not mistaken, she's. She's coming back. So she's coming back. Yeah, which nice. is cool. And the, the romantic is relationship again. has never <laughs> been like in the forefront. In what is it, Ghost Protocol? Her entire role was like literally two scenes. No, no, not Ghost Protocol. Ghost Protocol Isn't is Ghost Protocol? Uh, Dubai. Is the Burj Burj Khalifa one? Yeah. Yeah. Last time the one, the third one is just called yeah. MI3. <laughs> That's because you the can't JJ tell them one. apart. That's that's no, no. how strong of a universe no, no. it is. I tell you, you can okay. very much. Tell Let's them. run through Rogue them. Mission. MI, Mission Impossible is the one on the train. Yeah. Okay. Mission Impossible. That's Mission one. Impossible is Doom Two. two. Yeah. Exactly. Is Doom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mission Impossible. Yeah. Three. Mission Impossible Two is Philip Doom Seymour One. Hoffman. Is Philip Seymour Hoffman MI3 and the three and Philip Rab- Rabbit's Foot, where they don't explain what Rabbit's yeah, Foot. Yeah. The island mostly. Yeah. That is where I think. The Mission Impossible franchise took the leap into greatness. Into greatness, yeah. yes. Movie yeah. one was four. fun. This movie two was though, terrible, which is still like two is the worst. Let's two, is the worst. two is the worst. Two is the worst. Three is, is where good. it became what it is now. Yeah, because J.J. Abrams in control. Yeah. Then Brad Bird steps in, does some insane does it, stuff. Yeah, in one Ghost of the Protocol. best, one of the best like, ones. Uh, what is that? That is Ghost Protocol. Yeah, uh, kills off Tom Wilkinson. Yeah, and puts in Alec Baldwin. Yeah, so that. Instantly Again Amazing so, What a move all right? yeah. <laughs> It's like when uh, Ray Fine stepped in For Judy Dench Like, yeah, uh, like yeah. that level of cool yeah. And uh, and and now we're at Rogue Nation Which was the Rogue Nation which was, was five Which was five Which is the movie That Quantum of Solace Should have been <laughs> Yeah But was not And, and uh, Surprisingly Same director I think by the way Christopher McQuarrie Really? If I'm not mistaken oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure But like uh, Yeah But very similar plots But one executed to perfection And one not so much And uh, Rogue Nation was where uh, Anil Kapoor No Rog- uh, the Anil Kapoor is for That was Ghost, Ghost Protocol, Protocol. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Oh Yes Okay cool. But Rogue Nation had a great That's villain. how unimportant the plot has become So I feel like after Mission Anil Impossible Anil Anil <laughs> Anil At the end of Mission Impossible 1 You'd basically ask yourself like What? Because it's Everyone just remembered like the set pieces Like Tom Cruise hanging from the roof And right, whatnot. Right, right. And there were just so many twists in the plot yeah. It got too confusing for its own good Which is part of the fun Yeah Sure You mean basically it's 1, 2, 4, 4, 2, 1 now <laughs> Yeah <laughs> That's what I mean. Nicely done <laughs> Very true No but, but uh, Yeah and uh, But I just want to say that Even though we may shit on Mission Impossible 2 It had two things It had Limp Biscuit And it had Metallica <laughs> <laughs> Yeah that's yeah. true And they, they, they made that soundtrack So okay cool Okay so we're gonna a, disappear. We're gonna, yeah, <laughs> we will disappear for those who got that <laughs> reference. Uh, for a bit, we're gonna come back talk about uh, some of our other favorite movie universes. Hi, I'm May, and I'm a huge fan of the indie music scene in our country. A scene that's relatively underground, even though it sometimes speaks its head overground. But there's no shortage of talent, and I get the privilege of interviewing some of the most awesome musicians on my show. I've had the likes of Euphoria, Kirsch Kale, Hardcore, Randolph Coria. I've had singer-songwriters, folk singers, electronic music producers, playback singers, rappers, fusion artists, instrumentalists, classical musicians, and so on. Whether mainstream or not, these people have chosen to release their original music, and these are the people currently Currently shaping the direction in which our music scene is heading. Join me on my show every Monday and tune in to discover the unique talent coming out of India today. You can catch Made in India on your favorite podcasting app or our very own IBM podcast app. 
All right, we're back. We're talking about some of our favorite universes, uh, and we're establishing their rules, and their, we're talking about their characters and their stories. All right, so we've uh, we've gone through the Black Mirror verse, which we, uh, which I just realized. Is seemingly connected Maybe mm-hmm. just uh, strewn across Different points of time uh, We talked about Mission Impossible We're going to talk about One of my favourites now uh, Which is uh, The John Wick universe okay? Yay The Wikiverse The Wikiverse, Wikiverse. Relatively new Wikiverse okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah Dilka you have not seen this No And I have no idea why When I, I pitched it to you I, And yeah. Jishnu And you yeah. guys were like uh, John Wick was that uh. And I was just like Dude I'm this is an ins- on the concept you got to see it to believe it man I, I think know. it's one of those I just one one of those Amazing movies Which you know It's like You know like What Jason Statham Was trying to do With like Crank And yeah. you know Like no. you know the, the transporter But this is just To another <laughs> level Of quality Like it's quality cinema hey, Wait it's, is it like Self aware Like Crank was no no, no 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 it's not okay. It's more like I don't like think the, Crank was self aware though. It was, like, it was no, super self aware yeah, of, of the fact Like it kept <laughs> Like it just Messed with the people Watching it Like it's like It was very fourth wall breaking Like yeah. there was one scene In the elevator Where he's like Where this guy speaks In a different accent Or different language mm. And you can see Subtitles on Like Jason Statham Looks at him And looks down And he can see <laughs> subtitles <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so it's It's okay, like very it's very bizarre yeah. But it's also You could say It's just the drugs that Like shoot him up Yeah Shoot him up Is another one of those yeah. uh, Another one of movies uh, Which comes to mind Is Taken Obviously Which is the, which kind of established oh, I don't think this, Taken Was self aware I think No not self aware But I'm talking about This genre of You know Shoot him up Literally yeah. uh, One badass yeah, One badass Take on the world Kind of thing Right mm. So John Wick Kind of puts us In the position So when you When you just see it From a very superficial level You think John Wick Is Keanu Reeves Coming and shooting people In a really cool way hmm. Almost equally Equilibrium type Christian Bale type yeah. shooting okay. okay But What I really love about it Is the universe That they've created with mm-hmm. this It's this mm-hmm. really cool Assassins based universe Right It's very slick Yeah so why don't you just tell The kind of The prelude to the story of John Wick What is the story of John Wick Naveen Okay so he's an uh, A famous assassin They call him as Baba Yaga Which means the yeah. boogeyman The boogeyman And mm-hmm. he's not the devil But he's someone you call To kill the devil That's how badass he That's is a, in, But we, We're in media res So it's like He's already retired So the story of John Wick Is over Like yeah, he's, okay. he's retired now. All right. He found love. He found a happy family. He got married, and then his wife dies, and mm-hmm. she gives him a dog before dying. Okay, and when <laughs> when he gets a dog, he's very happy again. Like he has the memories. But these assholes at a at a fire, fire station. Yeah, it's like it's like a petrol pump. A petrol right? pump. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, they they like his car. Okay, they just like his car, and yeah. he has a really sexy. It's car, Alfie Allen funny. from Game of Thrones. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so okay. Alfie Allen being Theon, like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. season one to four, Theon. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, and he's just being a dick, and uh, he's just like, oh, what about this car? And he just tells him to, you know, and yeah. he drives hmm. home. And this guy who is completely unaware of who this guy is. Kind of invades his house, trash it, beats him up. You know, comes with a big group of people, beats him up, steals his car, and kills, kills his dog. dog. Okay, <gasps> this all happens in the first ten minutes. Okay, yeah. yeah, and then he's like, "I'm gonna get you." Yeah. So basically, his ho- the whole it's movie is, a, he is, a, is, a, is yeah, it's because they killed the dog. The only living memory of his wife and the times that he shared with his wife, and so he comes out of retirement. The story is he comes out of retirement to come and. Like wreak havoc On these people Now the cool thing About this movie Is that It's not just like A taken way He's just like Randomly There's a system there's It's a not set, taken with dogs It's not just taken <laughs> With a dog You know it's There's a system And a universe They've built right So okay. the assassins All kind of come To this one hotel Yeah And this hotel Is basically It's just filled of, With people who are Like you know Underground uh, under, Yeah just the underworld This is like a network Of and assassins they have, own, they, have, they have their own Bitcoin essentially They have their own Bitcoin <laughs> They have their own currency Yeah which is like this is just gold coins Okay It's just gold coins uh, You have to meet with Like they, he has his own queue over there Which can like Suit him up And do stuff And then there are rules of engagement Within this hotel That you can't engage in battle In the hotel What yeah. is the Okay so The hotel, hotel is like It's, like a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hub for, yeah, It's a, a hub, hub for them okay. Yeah, yeah for So like the tailor will also send you guns Basically he'll Yeah he'll send you guns And it's Peter Serenifovich uh, yeah, The tick The tick Yeah oh, who, is, who is there yes. right? And uh, and who is the main Ian McShane Ian McShane is the main Dude. Is the main uh, Like the concierge Not the concierge He's like the owner Of the hotel And he kind of Establishes the rules yeah. Right And now because He's going after This big Russian mob He has to kind of uh, Do a certain number Of things which come Through the hotel Like he has to get His contacts from there And da 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 And because And the story Is the first movie Is that because the, the Russian mob boss Knows that he's coming After him and his son He sets a bunch Of assassins on John Wick yeah, There's a right? bounty on him Yeah there's a okay. bounty on him And just like And then it's just chaos So these are all friends 
friends they all all the assassins know each yeah, other yeah everyone knows each other they're, they're like, all good friends but they understand that there's a a code you yeah. know there's a code and, and that code is what yeah, is my yeah, favorite exactly, part of exactly. this film like you believe in Natalie hey John you want to die tonight like yeah, that kind of stuff exactly and it's insane like how they follow this code to a T and they're very strict about it in fact like uh, there's one thing at the end where one of the assassins breaks the code and starts open fire in the hotel mm. and at the end of the film she thinks she's like you know just getting away scot free but she's cornered and she's just wiped out by Ian McShane yeah, and these yeah. people it's just like because there's this very strong kind of universe and 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 the coolest thing is that the second film kind of like develops yeah, this you know even further like they at take this it to point, different countries has yeah. he gotten revenge already yeah, he's gotten revenge yeah i mean like what's the premise so now they killed so, turtle uh, well the, the second film is that he you find out a little bit more about john wick's history is that how he got out of the game at all is because he kind of uh, did a, a, a he has a mark or something there's basically a rule where basically mm-hmm. you can get out if you have uh, you can do mark, a job yeah. okay. but he'll give you like this this counter and he'll say like you owe me at any point in my life where i need you to do something for me you have to do it but the thing is that john wick says i'm out of the game i don't have to come come back in but he's like if you don't i will have to kill you hmm. so that's why he has to re-enter the game but the thing is that now this is set in a different country it's in it's in italy if i'm not mistaken a part of it is based in the catacombs uh, yeah in the catacombs in italy yes. and so they have a hotel where there common <laughs> and he have a gun war like yeah. in the catacombs of italy it is insane <laughs> <laughs> this common is so cool yeah, in the movie yeah. this is like they're walking through a metro and shooting through the crowd yeah, th- at each other <laughs> it's these silencers like yeah. it's, it's outlandish but it's so it's much fun to yeah, watch it's just crazy fun and the coolest thing is that there's a hotel in Italy as well yeah. and like over there they have their own rules and they have their own thing going on so it's like you see all the the players in this game and this universe kind of builds 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 and, and then the like the thing is like in the second movie like we have uh, this guy Lawrence Fishburne Lawrence Fishburne coming in and yeah. he is like a homeless uh, shelter running dude yeah. basically he has a bunch of hobos who are out on every street watching out for him yeah so okay. that's like <laughs> another network of like nice. like the homeless network but like, it's like so basically insane. John Wick is bleeding out he'll put like a gold coin in a homeless dude's uh, bucket and he'll take out a gun from the other bucket and shoot the guys who are after him like, yeah. that's how cool what? that's the system that yeah. they have in place they it's use, like it's really they use bizarre. pigeons for transferring messages and, and stuff like that <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty it's, it's a great universe so outlandish but cool yeah it reminded me a lot of the Assassin's Creed uh, kind of universe like uh, I mean like literally it is about assassins but even in Assassin's Creed like the, the, the setting of that I mean that's completely different but uh, they have like this you know this whole home uh, kind of you know you're basically your headquarters and you know all the assassins need to check in at some point mm. you get the ravens or pigeons to kind of de- yeah. deliver assassin like hits basically you get from that so remind me of that which i also really liked about it and uh, yeah man if this is not a good enough reason It's you a good must enough reason watch this John Wick. I was sold before we started this good discussion <laughs> now I'm just more sold. Yeah yeah, yeah. it awesome. it sounds interesting to me that The entire premise is they kill my dog I'm going to kill everyone. That's how it starts, yeah. It's quite a ridiculous reason but I think it works because they've built such a rich world and yeah. like you were saying it starts in media res like yeah. once his entire story is done also. Yeah. Mm. But from the way you guys are talking it's built such an interesting set of characters yeah, and yeah. rules oh, that very colorful. You could tell very any colorful. story in that universe and it would be interesting. Yeah, it's true. You could like branch off with common story or yeah. anybody like for that all matter. All the characters yeah. are very intriguing. Yeah, like, Ian okay. McShane is great. Yeah. William Defoe is great. Like a lot of them are really Defoe good. Is there, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's this very uh, there's this famous screenplay book called uh, Save the Cat. Oh, okay. Which is basically about if you want to generate empathy for your hero the first thing you make him do is save a cat well that's the entire <laughs> this story this is the exact of opposite Keanu, by the yeah. way with uh, Keanu Ke- 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 kill his dog <laughs> yeah. no no but Keanu Peel did Keanu oh, right, which was course. kind of based on the whole you know i mean like they kind of spun off it, it's that all about, it's all about a cat <laughs> yeah. and they're trying to save the cat and Keanu is actually the cat <laughs> so it's pretty funny and a um, special appearance by Keanu. yeah he's actually there by the reef yeah. Yeah. yeah okay all right cool so that's the that's the universe of john wick which i really like um who wants to go next I mean I'll go next again yes yeah uh, so again as i said both my recommendations were tv universes second one is preacher oh nice uh, hmm. which is just like yeah. uh, season 2 is out and i haven't watched it yet yeah i'm also i'm still struck i'm still on season 1 i want to like finish off all of it together basically yeah, yeah. but season 1 what i saw was pretty interesting mm-hmm. uh, very outlandish again crazy characters some really different set pieces mm-hmm. it's, it's based in the it's the wild west of yeah, america yeah. but also has all these characters who are from different parts of the world coming there it's like everybody's kind of landed up there yeah and uh, have you read the comic have you read the comic I've book i've read like bits and pieces of yeah. it like It's great because all the references that I, you're calling out to yeah I, I think I, that I think they've done a really good job of adapting yeah it. yeah while creating the universe again uh, there's this guy who has a ass for a face yeah, yeah he's exactly. called us yeah, 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 yeah. there's a vampire yeah. 
Wait, a, what, what is his design like in the show? Because he's yeah. pretty... Disgusting. No, it's it's the same. It's not as disgusting it's, because it's like a big PG thing with polished the it. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a yeah. there's a <laughs> protruding butthole looking thing yeah. in his face. How is that cool to show on TV? They just do it. Oh, wait, what what is this an AMC show? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they're flexible, right? I, I think yeah. I mean I mean they don't <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty Noel's bad on Walking Dead. It's, okay. it's, and yeah. those two archangels were trying to get the machine back. Yeah. And those guys are just dying and coming back to life. Yeah. And like when I was watching it first, I was just like, what are these guys doing? Are they like bad guys or good guys? Yeah. And then they have a middle ground over there. And then you don't know who's the bad guy. Just trying to kill God, man. Yeah, that's just it. trying to kill God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, so, so yeah, so, so and Dominic yeah. Cooper's done a great job. Yeah, this, they're all really good. All three of them I are really I good. I want to be friends with them. You know, who's the yeah. other two? If you want, uh, I can't remember Ruth Ob- Ob- yeah. or something her name is oh, okay. One second. Are these guys in the show? Uh, Seth Rogen Ruth Nega is her name? Ruth Nega Yeah, yeah. she's amazing She's great huh? Are uh, Seth no, and Devin not, in the show I mean, at all? I don't know They've not no, no, no. showed up they're, no? they're just like the producers they're they're, yeah, yeah, they wrote and And they, uh, they write Yeah, so, they're uh, kind of show running now yeah, I don't think they wrote So the Joe first. Gilgan and Ruth Nega Are yeah. alongside So good Dominic Really, Nega. really good Like yeah. they've adapted Like it's exactly like What I think the comic would be If it came to life So hmm. they've done a really good job And we go to hell as well Yeah So Okay In one scene he basically screams Go to hell And ass face goes to hell like he has to come out of it Yeah So Preacher is pretty cool I mean yeah. like, that's a good universe Are they like renewed Or what's the scene Or is it just So I think season 2 is going on I'm definitely sure I think no be... Season 2 is done man yeah? yeah 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 it's definitely done Oh yeah it's done I yeah. was always kind of excited About Seth Rogen doing a superhero thing Because I think he's got The the potential to do it In a fun I know way. Everyone like chat on Green Hornet Green I enjoyed Hornet. it Green Hornet is such a fun movie I enjoyed I, it I don't know why they yeah, I don't know why people it. Yeah it was fine. It was perfectly. This is my favorite universe. As a okay the Green Hornet universe. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, sad. All right. Next, okay. Dinkar. What do you uh, What do you have for us? I'm gonna pick one at random. Okay. I have one. Oh no! Okay, I, I got a side. good one. Yep. The Toy Story universe. Nice. Uh-huh. Was on my. I was thinking about it. Do you mean the Toy Story universe, or do you need the the Pixar verse? Pixar so connected in theory, verse. it's the, it's let's, a connected verse. Okay, so right? let's in this episode. But it if can't we can, be because briefly, really, uh-huh. let us try and connect all the films together. Yeah. All right. All right. So so, but tell us first. What do you what do you like about the uh, Pixar? I mean, obviously, what's not to like? Yeah, it's the best. It's also it's one of the few franchises where. Not one of the sequels suffered from sequelitis. Uh, oh, it yeah. just yeah. got better, in fact. Just got better, yeah. Like, yeah. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like it, um, much like Harry Potter, it grew up along with the viewers. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, Toy Story 3 has a lot of like darker... Oh, Toy Story yeah. 3, yeah. that moment where they're all on that conveyor belt oh, heading towards that gosh. furnace is yeah. literally one of the most devastating things yeah, I've ever seen. Yeah, it's devastating. Yeah. I mean, Only Pixar can make you care about it. It probably will yeah. kill them because they're toys. You don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. The emotions Yeah are dude It's insane how you are Like after three movies You're just like These are toys And they like It can just go <laughs> into a lava but thing. Such, It's inside Yeah side. exactly But, but they're like but People oh One gosh. question I always have It's a very profound Stoner question <laughs> <laughs> But like if If uh, uh, Buzz is aware that he's That he was a toy yeah. why, why, he, why would he go Like stop motion Why, did he yeah. sound, why does everyone Ask me this question Every I time I talk about There's Toy no Story this question because why, because If Buzz it's thought a, He was a toy If he Buzz didn't think He was a toy Why didn't he just Wake up in his box I don't know Or oh, maybe he didn't Have batteries Why did he also Fall to the floor When Andy, when comes, Andy comes in Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a logical loophole. Yeah, it's a, or maybe Maybe cares? it's a thing They can't avoid doing Like it's a biological Function of toys I, You know Yeah like yeah, some should. people might say you don't need oxygen to live, but they still got to breathe. But in front of Sid, they come to they come to yeah, life in front of Sid. On, yeah. huh. Okay, fine. There's there's logical loops, it's fine. but it's, it's a great universe. Yeah, it's a superb universe. Okay, let's try and connect all these films together. All right. Okay. Now, supposing we live on this earth. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> supposing. Okay, this Pixar Earth. Now, a lot of people have been saying that. Uh, if you go to prehistoric times, that's when Brave happens. That they, everyone says Brave is the first. Of all the films, okay. wouldn't uh, chronologically the good dinosaur be the first one? Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. I haven't seen that. But, yeah, yeah. It's very so the good, good, good dinosaur. Hmm. But uh, okay, so brave is and when then the, brave. the witch kind of cast those spells, and what they're saying is that she's kind of imbued life into inanimate things and everything, basically. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ish vibes. Hmm. And there's um, there's a statue over there which resembles some other character. I, I believe so. Again and again, you'll have a bunch of Easter eggs hmm. and yeah. everything, right? So that's one thing. 
I also feel that there are parallel universes to the main universe, right? How do we know that? So we, even if we go through time, mm-hmm. you still see, um, you see, uh, okay, Toy Story say in the 90s, that's when we yeah. basically come in. Mm-hmm. Toy Story is our current world, yeah? let's say. Okay. Meanwhile, Bugs Life could happen anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Then um, Ratatouille could happen in France yeah. at any point of time. Again, it's contemporary. All, all contemporary. Monsters Inc. Monsters can Inc. happen in parallel with everything. It's a parallel universe, I feel. Like, Why is it a parallel universe? Because, so when you see all the, you see... Like the monster verse is a parallel is universe. Is a parallel universe. But they keep hopping in. in like they the come doors. to scare Boo in, exactly. the, in our world. In our world. So which I'm is saying, the Toy Story so world. The, but the monsters verse is a parallel verse to our. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. So now a lot of people said Cars could have been a parallel universe. Or, <laughs> or <laughs> it's the not so distant future when it's a post apocalyptic when situation. When the humans leave Earth during Wally. During the, Wally. Yeah, yeah. That's when and the cars movies. are like, all right, we can open our eyes. Which I are in our windshields. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've read this uh, really crazy. I told you, right, about this theory, the homunculus theory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's about this one website. Uh, what's it called? Uh, J- uh, Jalopnik. I can't remember. Jalopnik. Jalopnik, right? Yes. So Jalopnik puts out this, they're this auto website and they just talk mm. about cars and stuff. Mm. And they just cannot wrap their minds around the movie cars. They're like, <laughs> how does it work? They're just like, everyone's like, how does it work? And they've done detailed diagrams of like how a human is like, like, Keanu Reeves when he's still plugged into the matrix like that but inside a car okay <laughs> yeah. and like his eyes are like connected to the windshield eyes it's just or, like or bizarre yeah. Rick and Morty exist in the same universe as Pixar <laughs> because Rick does convert Morty oh, into a car oh that's a universe we didn't even yeah, yeah I've not, he, not uh, seen season 3 which is why I didn't even go into uh, it yeah. yeah but yeah but yeah I mean he realigns nano boss in his skin <laughs> to make him a car whenever he wants to like that's uh, well DD also becomes a car in uh in Dexter's In lab. Dexter? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, she becomes oh. a car. He puts, yeah. It, it's all sense. possible. It's all possible. In whatever realm. Maybe Dexter is part of the Pixar verse. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> there is a website called mm. pixartheory.com. So, Not it is a pretty yeah. popular theory, especially because Pixar has always like thrown out this thing where every movie has some character yeah. from the forthcoming movie in it. Or like even, uh, even in um, in Wally, in the debris and the, all the, the junk that you can see, you see so many Easter eggs that you can see the, you know, the Planet Pizza uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. food the truck. Pla- yeah. Planet Pizza has been in every yeah, Pixar yeah, movie. In, in some of them, it's obvious. In some of them, like, that it's that A-1 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 number, basically. A-1 A-1 3, yeah. 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 And everything. No, but even it's there in, uh, I believe it is there in Inside Out as well when they oh, yeah? move to San Francisco right like huh. they move and then it's a, they, and they the order from or Pizza Plan or something mm-hmm. like that yeah I believe so alright so that's uh, that's another theory so they are all connected Finding Nemo could happen anywhere yeah that I mean P. Sherman for it to all be way <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course I know but uh, what, what about um, so but what about this? why wouldn't you want to live in this universe it's all great all the people are nice Everything looks pretty. But we know what's going to happen. Like, we're going to live on the axiom and become fat. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. But I'm we'll come back and then redeem <laughs> ourselves. No, I said like, I mean, like, bone density will drop. And, yeah, we have to redeem ourselves. But so even then, I would argue that the people on the axiom are happy. Yeah, they're all they're they're disgusting. Know, but, they're, but they're like, they're, they're taking care a, of. They're very, cruising uh, on their chairs. They're like catatonic almost. Like, you know, just yeah. like... Yeah, but but the thing is that which is to be fair not that different from how I exist currently. <laughs> yeah. so. No, but uh, yeah. Oh, if I have to pick between the the Black Mirror verse and that, yeah, I'm going with that. <laughs> this is no. like the sunny version of the Black Mirror verse. <laughs> yeah, I know the, the really creepy version of yeah. it. No, but the cool thing is that you know I wouldn't mind watching a movie. I don't know if you remember the credits uh, for for Wally. Those are fantastically what made. What happened right? in the credits? It's Remind basically me? the re. Start of the mankind. Oh, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. But Correct. with technology. Imagine starting from the caveman era, but with the help of like robots and stuff. Yeah. I just found that just that thought alone was just so unique and so different that I, I just found that to be like thoroughly interesting. I would love to see a movie yeah. set over there. Like, that would be great. I just yeah, yeah, tried that almost. I feel oh, like not even the yeah. conflicty parts of Pixar movies would be interesting to go through. Yeah. Unless it's the first 10 minutes of Up, in which case, shut it down. Oh, no yeah. one wants to go through that. Yeah. Up was brutal. Yeah. But, but having said that, um, uh, we do have a new uh, Pixar movie which they're promoting very heavily right now called Coco, Coco. Yeah. which is a Mexican Day of the Dead kind mm. of movie. Which uh, reminded me of Book of Life. Yeah, Book of Life nailed it. Yeah, as far as I'm already concerned. did it. Like, I don't know why they're doing again yeah, the same and thing. And Guillermo produced that. So yeah, that, yeah. That, that that is done. It's I was like sitting at thing. the store streaming and I'm like, what is happening? Like, is it the same movie released? <laughs> it looks again? a lot like this. Yeah, but every, better, like, gra- the graphics are yeah, different. It's like, like Pixar, the animation style. world graphics. Yeah. But uh, like the same makeup and like the the Day of the Dead kind of feel. This is, oh, The Incredibles well, the while we're on, yeah, Oh yeah, of course yeah. Uh, The Incredibles could be, I suppose, another parallel universe No, it could be the same one 
Yeah, but then no superheroes brought he, up anywhere else. But he, superheroes were shut down after. Oh, yeah, that's true. The the yeah. It's all a secret. Yeah. yeah. But while we're on the Pixar verse in Coco, how do y'all feel about Pixar right now? There was, of course, that moment where they could do like no wrong. I feel like we discussed this once, but yeah. uh, I, I, I mean, just uh, yeah, Pixar. The golden age of Pixar was yeah. o- is over, like how the golden age of Disney was over, right? Like, I, I still feel like they can do great stuff. Like Inside Out was one of the best movies yeah. of that year. Yeah. yeah, but that sheen of like a Pixar movie being an event is gone. Like, yeah, definitely. The Good Dinosaur was one of the most meh releases. Yeah, ever. But they, didn't, like, they didn't promote it as it much. It came and went much like a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they didn't really do a, a lot of promotion. Yeah. I remember when Ratatouille and all these films used to come out. They even Finding Nemo, for that matter, when it came out, there was such hoo ha for it. So because like, they were obviously marketing to a way younger. Audience and now mm-hmm. the kids have it's spoiled for choices now. Yeah, well, if you look at it, true. they have but so much animation going on throughout the year, and all yeah. of them come to India. And they're all good. Like so, so just to come to that point, uh, I mean, like I think Disney is in its like resurgence right now, man. That's like true, with yeah. Moana yeah. and, and Wreck It Ralph and and I remember a bunch when of I went films. for the Penguins of Madagascar. I was I was <laughs> there as a reviewer with other critics, right. like mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> other critics for the Penguins of Madagascar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was at the back two rows, the critics, and then only kids in the front. So it made such a horrible movie viewing experience. Wow. This sounds Sounds like me at the Ed Sheeran concert. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which will well, never happen now. <laughs> It's oh, still I, happening I went I for the previous one oh, No that's oh. no, happening I think. <coughs> Cancel no 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 it's still happening the, I feel like the average age but, Will be uh, even younger now Last I time when I went uh, It was me and like 12 year olds <laughs> I don't think he's gonna be playing He's broken both of his arms yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Plus he's an alcoholic Yeah apparently, apparently Yeah so well <laughs> Yeah okay. Anyway Moving on Okay I think we have time For one last one uh, okay. I will close break, it out though. We can take a small break And then come yeah. back in. Yeah Alright let's take that break then Hi, I'm Amit Verma, the host of the weekly podcast, The Seen and the Unseen. In my show, I examine the seen effects and the unintended consequences of public policy and private action. I show how policies meant to help the poor often end up hurting the poor. I've done episodes so far on demonetization, GST, surgical strikes, immigration and MRP. And I will continue my forensic assault on the truth in the weeks to come. Catch the show every Monday on the IVM Podcast app or any other podcasting app that you prefer. Or visit seenunseen.in for all the latest updates. Alright, we're back. Uh, And before we just head into the last movie universe that we are going to be talking about, uh, let's talk about something fun that's happening in, say, a week or so. Hmm. Which is Geek Fruit 100. Oh, what? Yeah, it's our 100th episode. We should be more excited about it, but for us, it's business as usual. We do a good job every episode. Oh, but it's not business as usual. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. true, but uh, now we're doing it to people's faces. Yeah, we're going to be doing a very special edition of uh, the Geek Fruit podcast. Where we're going to be doing it live. Yes. And what are we going to do in that then? What, what, what should we talk about in that one? Well, we'll do a bunch of things. I am campaigning very heavily for us to play Dinkar's game, which I am cool with renaming because it's a very... Dinkar's game <laughs> sounds like Gerald's game. Or, yeah, or, I know. It, it makes those me, who come for the game will be like somehow manipulated. It makes me sound <laughs> like a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. I see it now. Yeah. And also it describes nothing about the game. But I am campaigning for that. All right. What else should we what, do? What is Maybe the game, Dinkar, a... just so people know again? You name groups of four and put them in Hogwarts houses, <laughs> such as the social medias, which yes. we didn't settle on, by the way. I feel like Instagram's a Gryffindor. Uh... It's got heart. Facebook's yeah. a Ravenclaw. It literally has heart. That's smart. how you like stuff on it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Snapchat's a Hufflepuff. Because <laughs> they're dumb. Yeah, because they're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. The cool, biggest so, thing is the dancing hot dog. So I'd also put Facebook somewhere close to Slytherin sometime because they have a yeah. finger up but... <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we can definitely do this game. I think we should definitely uh, talk about this year's releases. We'll just talk about maybe... Yeah. Uh, because we have two big movies we haven't yet talked about this month, which is Thor. Uh, and uh, Justice League, which is going to be we're saving soon. them. For it's already the ride. looking like it's going to be a disaster because oh, well, let's see. We'll, we'll, taken a world just time right. Yeah, I thought yeah. It was good. We will talk about that soon. Uh, and uh, also, you know, Murder on the Orient Express. There's a bunch of great movies that have come out this year. We're yes. going to be talking we'll about all of those. We'll do the year in review. Yeah, year in review. And uh, any other suggestions that you have, you can always let us know. Let's move on to the last film. Hmm. Uh, the last film universe which I want to talk about, which I actually found quite entertaining. It's not as deep as, say, some of the other ones. But the Pacific Rim universe hmm. is quite hmm. interesting to begin with. Because, uh, I mean, I, I know it's very inspired from, you know, a lot of anime and, you know, just, you know, Jaegers versus Kaiju. I think that alone is uh, is something that it, we've seen before. But what I really like about it is that they kind of put a very original spin on it. And something that is just really... 
strange about the entire universe in general. It doesn't fall within, you know, the general Transformers, New York City destroying not, kind yeah. of vibe. You know, That's it doesn't true. have yeah. that vibe. It, in fact, the very nature of the, I mean, the title of the Pacific Rim, it just so happens that the kaiju spawn only at points at the Pacific Rim. So yeah. you automatically get a bunch of different cities like involved in this thing, right? Mm. So you get the whole of Polynesia, you get, you know, Japan. Hong Kong and stuff like yeah. that. Hong Kong is where one of the best battles yeah. in the entire film yeah. happened. Uh, and I just found that just just by default, I just found that really interesting. Just because you get out of this like America centric Yeah, thing? you get out of it and you get to see like a different side of the world and how they react. And obviously since it is so inspired by, you know, Asian influences, I just found that that to be just a differentiating those kind of influences factor, come yeah. across as well. It's yeah. not just that yeah. the geography has shifted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe just shifting the location changes the feel of a movie yeah, significantly. Like hundred percent. Like I mean, the fact that it has this whole Australian, it has this very Australia, Southeast Asia vibe, right, going mm. on with it, and I found that really cool about I it. I never yeah. thought of it this way, but you're right. Like yeah. same thing with District Nine, right? Just the uh, yeah, fact that exactly. he put it in a different place. For a change, very yeah. true. Very true. Or Snowpiercer for that. Plus, they could also play with the whole uh, segregation angle over there with the aliens. Like it was so. Yeah. Oh, and that had a very yeah very strong political. A very point, South yeah. African. And part, even Godzilla yeah. did that with the new movie. It was. Entirely Tokyo in the later half. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah it sta- no, it go- starts off yeah. there and kind of ends there. My favorite well. part of the movie is when he says Gucci. Yeah, Gucci. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, just like how what is his name Jean Reno did in the 1998 one. I remember. The oh, one is the nineteen. He didn't say it, but he the, sees that guy. He sees said, the Gucci. Yeah. Gucci. Yeah, but yeah, loved it. And I know it's a great movie. Okay? Just to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the universe isn't dark. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, no. Yeah, but Pacific Rim, <laughs> though. I mean, like uh, uh, other things that I really enjoyed about it. It's just like the characters are so weird. Like they're so very different. Like I, I mean, I just pulled up the cast list and I just went to see everyone's name in the film. It's so weird. Rally, Rally Beckett. <laughs> Okay, then you have General Stacker Pentecost. You have Mako Mori, who's uh, um, you know the the second uh, the co-pilot of the main Jaeger, Gypsy Danger. There's Newt Geisler. Uh, Charlie Day plays a character called what? What is this? I don't even know what he plays. Just like um, just like a bunch of really weird sounding. Oh, he plays Newt Geisler, and uh, yeah, just. Different weird names yeah. and Ron Perlman as this weird Hong Kong based. Who wrote? Uh, who wrote? I think that I, I don't know. Uh, Guillermo didn't write it. Yeah, he wrote the story he just of the film. directed, produced, right? Um, I will tell you. Written by sto- ah, story and screenplay by Travis Beecham, who also who? did. Uh, oh, and Guillermo also wrote it. Yes, okay, with uh, Travis. And Travis also kind of put out uh, this um, uh, prequel called Pacific. Uh, Rim Zero or something like that way what? we kind okay. of it fleshed out the, the the story of how Kaiju came to Earth so even in this film what is this a movie? Uh, no it's a, it's a graphic novel sorry oh, okay and uh, this movie as well kind of starts in media as we're already yeah. like about 20-30 years into Kaiju first appearing maybe this Earth. is what helps build a universe the yeah. fact that you like you already have such a strong base that you yeah. can start at any point and yeah. still and it's very story. believable like you know when we see you know uh, Idris Elba as this guy who says he's seen it all he's done it all I know mm. he keeps dabbing his it's very <laughs> obvious he's got a medical issue problem you know like you know his nose when he starts bleeding it's just because and we see those flashbacks where he's kind of saved Marco's that's character that's a beautiful scene yeah, it's a really, See, really the pretty. Girl, the, she runs with her old little shoe, and I'm just like, oh my god, I want yeah, to build her. It was so cute, and it was just really like a big emotional moment in the yeah. film, obviously. And you know, um, just that they continue that thread throughout the film. So I just found that that movie would just had really a really rich universe, even though it wasn't super deep in terms of like, oh, okay, cool, just you know, it's not gonna be one that you're like, oh, that emotionally shook me. But the action is great, and all of it feels believable in a weird. You know, surreal way because yeah. they've you know made all these characters so like you know realistically and you know they've written out and like, all the really effects inside stuff. the eagle's head are also very realistically done. Like, yeah, that is his speciality in general. Oh yeah, that he, yeah, yeah. That he pays attention to practical effects instead of yeah. And the CGI fact that they made this movie on such a like bu- like on a budget, right? Like hmm. they didn't like over you know spend or anything hmm. like that. Only because I remember watching some of the interviews and Guillermo was like the biggest cost for some of these movies when they make CGI films is that suddenly in the middle of post production they'll be like no. 
it doesn't look scary enough like add a third <laughs> leg or something like that. you know like it, it doesn't but here they designed it like right from pre-production yeah. and they stuck with it right till the end so they didn't have to do any extra VFX shots so there was a very limited number but they were all on point so I think that was like it, you can tell that it's a very you know well, well crafted film yeah. that, that is even I mean, the that pants is labyrinth thing, uh, universe yeah. is very intense yeah, I, I yeah. was gonna talk about that yeah. as well but because like, he's so good at it he yeah. starts off from, from building the people who'll be inhabiting this universe yeah. and then builds on it he, with the story he, he does something called story bible when yeah. he starts projects where he hmm. writes the entire the rules like the, and the setting of the universe and then he kind of writes a he creates screenplay. the universe and then just makes a movie set in it set in yeah. it yeah, uh-huh. it's, 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 yeah which is cool and he's done that apparently for Justice League Dark as well really? where he's written the story bible and now they're just trying to make like you know one which has Constantine he's aware that the Justice League Dark story bible already exists no but well yeah and but it's I mean, a million comics but the fact that yeah exactly yeah, but the fact that he, you know he's he's done the, the groundwork for these films and you can trust really, him with yeah yeah this. maybe have that's even his visual have you seen that little that vi- uh, video on of Conan, uh, Conan showing, Andy, yeah. Andy Richter goes it's to his house it's just full of like the Pan's Labyrinth world yeah. mm. is Guillermo del Toro's house <laughs> and each, ha- each room has a theme like it's like as good as making like a story like you know like <laughs> yeah. it's this is one is like you know ghouls and demons one's like vampires one's like different yeah. it's just bizarre and really but, cool but uh, your mention of Justice League Dark reminds me though we ruled out DC Universe I did want to talk about the DC animated universe. Well, yeah, it's such a good I universe. Mean, it's it's. I mean, goes without saying. I feel like it's underrated, and when people do this whole like ridiculous Marvel versus DC comparison, I was they forget like, them. Yeah, yeah. Watch the animated movies also. The animated movies they've always had an edge over Marvel. Like in Marvel animated films haven't been as good though. Yeah. Yeah. But the DC animated one, I mean, they've had like a stellar team, you know, Andrea Romano, Jay Olivia, all these guys who have just been doing it for so long. Yeah, man. They're Every b- movie Jay Olivia directs, I'm like, I'm going to watch this because it's yeah, so much. Yeah, he's just solid. He's yeah. just solid. He's just great. Andrea Romano doesn't even direct anymore, man. She did the entire Batman animated series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, uh, she's just like, now she's just doing voice direction because they've got such a good team in place. Bruce Tim, yeah, yeah. I mean, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Paul Dini, the guys who yeah. have just literally made that, you know, some scratch. Anyway... No, great, we'll get into it on great, a future date. Great. Yeah, we should do an entire episode of that. That's a that's a different episode for sure. Cool. Uh, make sure you guys uh, you know tune in or at least try and attend our uh, Geek Fruit special 100 episode. We don't have a title for that thing. We'll figure it's, something out. It's we'll the Geek Fruit 100. It's on 26th yeah. though. 26th it's on the 26th, 26th of November. at the Cuckoo November. Cafe in Mumbai. Yes. For sure? That's yes. confirmed? Great. It's confirmed, yeah. Awesome. I'm excited. All right. We'll see you there. Hopefully. Cool. Uh, thanks for being on this episode, uh, Naveen. Yes, and, uh, my honor. Yeah, uh, what are your handles, guys, on Twitter? Um, at Dinks Thinks. The Ravenclaw of... No, the, <laughs> the, Slytherin. the Slytherin of social media. <laughs> of social media. I'm no underscore Rona. And I'm at Tejas Menon. Uh, cool. Uh, you can find us on at Geek Fruit HQ across platforms, social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook included. Uh, or write to us, contact geekfruit at gmail.com as always. See you later, you nerds. Bye. Bye. Excuse me, bhaiya. Excuse me. Bole, madam. Menu me kya hai? Menu me scene and scene hai, podcast hai, on course hai, Cyrus hai, hai, Made in India, Rediscovery Project, Empowering Series, Sex Vex hai, IBM Likes hai, Simplified hai, Keeping It Queer hai, Things and Destinations hai, My Neighbor Zuckerberg hai, aur The Fan Garage hai. Aapko kya chahiye hai? Uh, ek baar repeat kar denge kya? Repeat, repeat nahi karta hum. Aap jao, ibmpodcast.com pe aur suno ye sab. Ya fir download karo unka app. Sab aapke unglio pe.